All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, long awaited, long overdue. Uh, I want to say this is episode number four, which, like I said, long overdue. Uh, 50 Feb podcast. A um, little different uh, episode this, this time around. Uh, kind of wanted to get into a little psychology this is this is literally i i made a video on the channel i said that i was gonna take you know like make notes and this was gonna actually be a little bit more like pre-scripted whatever so i didn't i didn't lie but at the same time i didn't do that because i pretty much remember everything that i wanted to talk about um i did that video uh i want to say day before yesterday so right now just to give you an idea um it is saturday morning it is 3 23 a.m friday late friday night early saturday morning um yours truly has not been to sleep yet um spent some time just kind of dabbling um was online chatting it up with uh with some uh colleagues of mine in uh couple of different streams got some uh, racing in and uh you know simulated some hours away let's just say but to kind of stay on track and on topic here because it, it's it's easy for us to just kind of run off into the distance in these kinds of conversations uh one of the things that i wanted to to kind of go over and you probably heard this from from different uh influencers youtubers what have you whatever whatever uh the the going or current expression is uh nowadays whatever that is um you hear a lot about um ambition uh goal seeking and how when you you kind of find whatever that one thing is like if you're driven to do something that a lot of times you'll find that it's it's literally it's like it's you and you right so i've i've held on to an idea and a notion for a long time since i was since i was a kid which basically went along the lines of typically whomever You've been, and I'm trying to keep the slang out of it, but you just kind of have to forgive me. Like some, some of the New Yorker is going to come out in me and, and some of the other places that I've lived is going to come out at the same time. But um, I'll just say that usually the, the adage is, you know, you're, you're going to ride off into the sunset with the, the, the party, the individual, the sidekick or whatever that you came in with. And there there is a part of that that and it's not really an axiom the way i said it but you know some people would say yeah that's the way that it should be and i would agree under certain circumstances some circumstances that might actually be the case when when you get into the realms and the areas of of personal development and personal growth um everybody is not equal and the best way that you can tell that everybody is not equal is either based upon the things that they focus on the things that they spend energy on the amount of time that they spend wasted and when i say wasted i mean doing like absolutely nothing like nothing at all um kind of what I probably should be doing but somebody else would say hey you know you you were committed to do something which I was which was to make sure I get this uh episode of this podcast out and and also just kind of troubleshooting and saying to myself hey I could do some forecasting I could get a lot of stuff done in the next couple of days because I'll, I'll have a little bit of time right um I could sleep later so to finish and follow up on that when when you start to develop yourself at a pace or at a rate in which 
using that same analogy, the party or the crowd that you rode into the town or the village with, they're, they're going to stop and they're going to take notice, right? They're, they're going to look around and say, okay, well, you know, um, maybe he's changing for the better. Like it's going to, you know, fulfill us, right? That's the easy, that's the easiest way. And the more that you get into your personal development, what you're really doing is you're looking inward, but you're actually doing something else. And I promise I'm going to tie this in at the end, but I, I kind of have to lay, lay this, this groundwork, this foundation out first. And I'm going to make it kind of personal at the end, <laughs> which, like I said, I don't know, I don't know how it's going to be taken, but I, I guess, you know, it, it, it's what it is at this point. But again, you're, you're, you're looking inward. You're being introspective to find out what are the things that, that you can focus on or what are the things that you can do? What are the skills that you have? What, what are the, the capabilities that, that you've not quite unlocked to exploit, to better yourself? Not exploit for any kind of nefarious thing, but just to, to basically level up, as the expression goes, in life. So that's one aspect. That's the primary aspect of what the focus is. The secondary aspect of that personal development is you become a mirror to everybody else around you. And the mirror is not everybody seeing you. The mirror is everybody seeing themselves. And what they see more times than not is a reflection of someone that is not maximizing their time and their potential. Now that manifests itself in different ways, but to, to, to underline in the shortcut, you know, any, any kind of, you know, extended nuance to explain that, that's, that's really, that's the crux of the entire thing. They're looking at what are you doing? Like, it's a question. And then there's a physical representation of that. The question is, what are you doing? It's really that simple. And then it is the visual image of who they are. And then they can't answer that question. But the more they look at you the more they begin to understand the answer to the question of what are you doing? They eventually learn that the answer to that question is, well, I'm not doing shit. I'm not doing anything. I'm fucking, I'm watching time go by, but I'm looking at this individual that I, I, well, I knew because now you're changing. Okay. You're, you're redefining who you are you're you're in that process of leveling up you're you're trying to achieve more so now you don't look the same and you shouldn't you're not acting the same nor should you you know maybe a little bit more focused maybe a little bit more disciplined maybe a little bit more quiet so that same posse that you rode into to the, the township in the village with, now they're kind of looking at you with a little bit of animosity. Now they're looking to say, hey, you know, you've changed since we've gotten here. I don't know who you think you are. Don't know what you think you're doing. What do you think you're better than us now? You're just like us. Hell, we're going to show you. You're no different than us. How, how does that translate into uh, personality and personal? So I won't take you through the entire time. I've, I've said multiple 
in multiple live streams. Um, I, I want to say maybe within one of the first couple of uh, episodes, there have only been four. So <laughs> I'd like to think that in one of the previous episodes of uh, 50 Fib, um, I've kind of talked about my path through um, financial markets and in trading, the interest, um, the studying, the price action, like all of that. Like we, we you've, you've heard those things. Um, this particular episode, I would like to think is going to speak directly to um, I don't know what the population is. I would like to think that it's it's more it's more defined than what the amount of attention, the amount of videos and the amount of conversation is given to it. Um, we have a lot of content creators, a lot of outstanding content creators that talk about the philosophical side of um, mental preparation to, to be able to focus, to be able to separate, um, not just within a, a, a strategic standpoint in terms of looking at markets and, and how to analyze, but more or less how to govern emotions and feelings not from a FOMO standpoint but just from understanding what your edge is and only acting and operating on that edge the opposing side of that same philosophical uh, core is your support your, your, your individual your personal and your emotional support now, it's no surprise, and this is going to sound however it sounds, but it's no surprise that most people realize that when you're engaged in the markets, it's, it's a you and you. It's, it's a, you know, it's a one-sum game, if you will. It's you, it's you in the market, and that's it. It doesn't matter whether or not you, you trade in a group or in a Discord channel or... Uh, through Zoom or chat, it doesn't matter. Like none of that really matters. You you could be in a live stream with with fifty people and you're all looking at NQ. You're looking at Nasdaq, and one person or three people could say, "I'm longing this from here," and the other forty seven can sit back and determine whether or not they individually are going to take that long position with the initial three. But at the end of the day, that's 50 people. Those are 50 individuals that are operating on their own individual plan as to whether or not they're going to execute or not. It's it's an individual task. Now, while everything is individualized, individualized, wow, while, while everything... <laughs> is is based on the individual while we have to take ownership of of our ideas the concepts uh the planning the strategic positions that we take right we have to take ownership of that there is still a part of of our psyche that is not necessarily looking for the acceptance of others uh in in terms of anyone else agreeing with what we choose to do for livelihood for secondary income for what wh whatever the the reasonings behind why you you're a uh, a financial speculator whatever whatever the reasoning okay but when you you know somebody doesn't have to say hey look i agree with what you're doing but the fact that you know that there is some support mechanism that's there even if they don't understand exactly what it is that you're doing because honestly nobody's really going to understand except someone else that's in the markets which is why a lot of times you'll hear people say hey i need a trade buddy or come trade in my discord and you know be around you know like-minded people that understand like there's a reason for that what drives me is not the community it is the family and 
the reason, like I said, that I, I, I wanted to, to kind of talk about this is because I think that there's some people that, that feel like, you know, because it's an individual, because you could go in a group, because you could find other traders that, that you know, um, you can bounce ideas off of. They can give you different ways of looking at uh, certain markets or, or look deeper into a strategy to kind of just understand and constantly just continue to try to evolve. Right. So all of those are wonderful things. They're all wonderful tools. They're all um, rewarding and, and allow for an expansiveness in an ever evolving uh, market. Um, it doesn't matter the instru the instrument. It's it's the market itself. It's always going to evolve. Okay. When that community is not available and you have to go back to quote unquote normal life or you know activity, whatever you want to call it, your family, your spouse, your husband, your boy, your your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, like whatever, whatever it is. Um. one of the things that people talk about is to say, Hey, look, just don't tell anybody. And that works. And, and the reason that that works is because it goes back to the, the riding into the town or, or that village with your posse. It goes right back to that. Um, it's going to be frowned upon. Um, it's, it's going to be viewed as, that's a pipe dream It's going to be viewed as you can't do that. Um, what, what are some others? Um, hey, you know, who again, like the kind of who do you think you are? Like you think you're special, like you're going to be able to. All right, we'll stop there. That's enough. So. My personal experience with this is just about all of the above okay just about all of the above um but for me it wasn't that cut and dry there was a situation uh this is 2024 i i can't it's it's been more than 10 years that much I can tell you. It's been on or about maybe a little over 10 years. And I'm not going to get into naming names. Um, if if this individual <laughs> ever hears this podcast, they're going to know who that who they're going to they're going to remember this instance that I'm about to reference. Um, they will know who I am speaking of them. They, they'll know. OK. Um, but there was a situation where um, I've always been entrepreneurial. I've always been there. There's never been a time where, you know, I didn't come across. It's not like <laughs> I was about to say, it's never, never been a time where I've come across an idea that I didn't like. There, there's always been that. But um, there's never been a time where if I looked into something and I thought that maybe, you know, what there was something that um could be gained or benefited there was there was a component where you could share an idea where people would be able to benefit prosper from and maybe there, there's some kind of financial uh reward for that um, that i wouldn't be willing to explore if i saw the opportunity that hey you know what that's i've got a couple of strengths in that that's something that i would like to try let me test that out and and jump headfirst into something because of a belief in myself, right? And I've done that countless times over my life where I I saw something, I saw an opportunity, I planned, strategized, put something in place, stepped out on what some people would say was faith, maybe gained a little bit of traction. A lot of stuff didn't work. I failed a lot and a lot of shit. I failed, okay? I'm going to say that again. I failed at a lot of stuff. Um, I've I've off the top of my head, I would tell you that I. Uh, started. Cultivated <laughs> maybe about four or five 
uh, different businesses failed. All of them, they failed. But the one underlying factor in all of those failures was me and the additional caveat to that one underlying factor in all of those failures was that my resolve was never shaken because I just looked at it as, you know what? I stepped out maybe, you know, not so much the, I should have zigged and, you know, I should have zagged when I should have been zigging. No, it was never that it was, Hey, you know what? It didn't work out. You know, and then I would do some self-analysis. Hey, maybe I didn't, you know, there were some things that I could have done better. Maybe I should have been more aggressive doing blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And I had to go back to the drawing board. I had to go back to scratch. You know, if that meant, you know, in a lot of cases when I was stepping out, what I mean stepping out is I was walking away from jobs to pursue an individual goal or an idea that I had that I felt like, hey, you know what, if all all of the, the, you know, not the stars, but like if everything aligns and I put the proper amount of effort and, you know, try to build and cultivate and grow this like, hey, who knows, probably won't need that other thing anymore. I'm going to say it again. Five and all five failed. But. You know, as I've I've said several times, um, and I believe I actually said this in the last video that um, went up on YouTube. You only fail when you stop trying. And I probably lived (laughs) the the like and when I say the majority of my life, I mean, since I was a kid, since I was probably, you know, I would say maybe. 10, 10, 11, 12 years old. In and around the time, like for me, it was never failure was never something that I looked at that um, paralyzed me. Failure has never paralyzed me. So as a child, as a kid, you know, playing baseball or whatever, like, I was, I've never, I'm not going to say I've never been, well, actually I haven't. I've never been demoralized. I've I've never felt like I couldn't accomplish something. I've never felt like if I failed at something, like there was something wrong with me. What I did always do is to go back and say, did I get and do everything that I possibly could to, you know, maybe have a, a different type of an outcome. And every single solitary time when I was honest with myself, I always came back and said, well, yeah, I probably, you know, more than likely, yes, there's something more that you could have done that maybe would have made that successful. There are a couple of ideas or a couple of those, which is why I said five. Um, It doesn't mean five individually, but there were a couple of them. I doubled back and tried to do again and it just didn't work. It didn't stick. It didn't gel. Um, And. What brings me to wanting to do this podcast and why this is probably a little bit longer um, and it's not a rant in any way, but this is kind of this is a a, a, I guess you could say it's kind of like a twofold uh, podcast episode. This is something that I've kind of wanted to get, I guess, off of my chest. It's a Saturday now um, for for the last week. And and I could, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to share how certain feelings and emotions can reveal themselves to you to where you don't realize that some, like you you've changed your whole outlook in certain situations or or your your overall character to where you don't see something that's being put right in front of you like you don't understand something so what do i mean by that I'm going to go back just a second ago when I told you, you know what, there were a couple of those uh, out of those five, like I double back, tried again, um, didn't pan out, didn't work out. Um, Some of you may know, many of you do not. um, But a couple of years ago, I lost my mother. My mom passed away. Um, My best friend 
in the entire fucking world, hands down. Um, my father, also no longer here, he he passed when I was nine, and I, I've I've kind of talked about this not in any level of depth, but you know it it kind of goes out, and you know people could think what what they want. So my my outlook on a lot of things. Um, single parent households for one, like my outlook on a lot of, of stuff, a lot of people would, would maybe take issue with some people would take issue with it. A lot of people would feel like who to, you know, who the hell are you? And I could honestly say, well, who the hell am I? I'm, I'm a kid that technically, you know, I, I came from a single, uh, single parent household because my father passed away when I was nine. So I'm the result of of you know some things that i i can definitely speak on when, when somebody goes you don't know and the kids that come out of those environments so our our relationship was uh probably one that i i honestly can't really i can't do it justice <laughs> Uh, in in terms of how to describe it, other than to say, um, kind of what I've already said, in in my my opinion, in my my mind, the greatest fucking woman that ever walked this planet. That that's that's what my mother meant to me, you know, a woman that sacrificed the potential of what could have happened to me bringing me into the world where by um you know as i got older and she explained and i'm not going to go into that level of detail because that's that's not really for anybody um that's that's a very personal thing but i will just simply say uh due to her explanations as i got you know a little bit older as our relationship was was more developed and cultivated there was always the parent child obviously but it it was so much deeper than that even as a child for me because i kind of took i guess you could say the burden or at least what i thought was the emotional burden of making myself available to my mother and by doing that, you know, was there probably a level of sacrifice from being a child? Yes. But looking back at that now, uh, I would simply say that I would accept the trade off because, you know, my parents were were in, in a good position, I'll say financially, as we were, you know, myself and my siblings as we were raised so our our mindset was always of a level of abundance and not scarcity okay and because of that kind of philosophical basis our my my mother and i's relationship as i took on an emotional burden with my father passing it was kind of like a a matter of fact meaning I didn't think that I was really missing out on anything. I felt like, you know, maybe I was I was trying to mature at a faster curve than what I should have been. Now, that didn't mean that I'd, I'd stop doing all kinds of kids things and I'm sitting around reading, you know, uh, well, I was about to say reading encyclopedias, but my dad had us doing that anyway. It's the kind of library we had in my household growing up. If if there was any like, I, I'm 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 being a little facetious, only a little bit because I can't with a hundred percent accuracy back this up. But I will say that more times than not, if you had a question about almost anything, I'll say almost. <laughs> if you had a question about almost anything, and you ask my father if he could not tell you, which was very rare that the man couldn't answer a question and he never he wouldn't bullshit you. If he didn't know. He would simply refer you. To one of many books and in, in the vast library of my childhood, 
He'd literally say, go find one of the encyclopedias and look that up. And I believe there's a book in here somewhere on that. We, we had books upon books upon books. We had like a little library in the house. Okay. Encyclopedias, more than one set, all types of books, literature, history, if you if you could think it damn near it was it was on a bookshelf somewhere okay so the point i was making with that is that we 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 were in a place where we were going to be challenged mentally and it was the the challenge was development develop yourself there's no such thing as hey i'm in a house i'm bored Read a book. You find you, you you're gonna find something to develop yourself. Like you don't remain stagnant. And even in 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 my father's passing, that that didn't really stop with with my mom. So, not to make this about she and I, but to to you know the core of what has prompted this episode, it it does revolve around my mother quite a bit. So. My failed ventures, because our relationship was unfucking breakable, um, even when we agreed to disagree, even when we were upset with one another, or I was upset with her. Um, there, there's, there's always, there was always a level of you know admiration and and just outright fucking respect, because. How can I not respect the greatest motherfucking among in place? Oh, like, who am I, right? <laughs> so, as a, again, older, having stepped out, tried a few things. She gave me a piece of advice. Not once. Not twice. Not three times. But to the point where... <laughs> On one one of many days, Saturdays, Sundays, you pick the day. It doesn't matter because there there were there were a, a, an abundance of days spent at her house in the kitchen, cooking or sitting and snacking and talking, where she said something that I'd always heard it, but. It was a mirror. It was a mirror. Here's what she said. As I've gone through, you know, these ventures that were primarily dependent on other people. Here's what my mom said on more than four plus occasions. She said, Jeremy, you know. If you can find something that you enjoy, that you understand, and that you can do to the point where you can almost, well, not almost, you can do it and you can reap some level of financial gain from it where you're not dependent on someone else to secure you financially and if you just happen to enjoy it it's not going to seem like it's a job the most important part of that is you have to depend on yourself that's the best way if you could find something, you don't need anybody else to validate and to provide the income. Find something like that. That's what she said. 
and and just in case you missed it, that's what she said to me on more on more than four occasions as an adult. Now we're in 2024. Um, I'm I'm thinking how detailed I actually want to be with with this this portion of what I'm going to say. I'm going to be kind of vague because, like I said, I'm I'm a you you say, damn, how the hell are you going to be vague? You can't say you're a private person because you're telling us some pretty personal shit. I am, I am, um, but I'll 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 add a couple of pieces in here, and then I'll I'll round back, okay. I promise I'm going to round back. So I've always loved numbers since I was a kid. I used to keep notebooks with statistics in them. Hockey, football, whatever it was. Goals, assists, and points for hockey. The goals averaged against. I'd figure out, you know, I'd, I'd, you know, have... Like the uh, imaginary games as a kid so I could create the statistics and build on them. Those that I had, um, I actually had like a hockey record book. So I'd pick out the f- my favorite players. I'd, I'd simulate like a, a, you know, a pseudo season, like in the room, nothing too crazy. And I would I would expand on the numbers. I'll say it again. I kept notebooks of statistics. And they weren't just random numbers. I was literally in there adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying to make sure that it was my kid doing this. Numbers. Fast forward (laughs) to uh, 2003. And... I'm introduced to uh, spreadsheets. I'm exposed to, to be very specific, expense reports. I'm exposed to budget analysis, SWOOT analysis, business planning, um, corporation structure, shell corporations, uh, initial public offerings, uh, private, uh, personal private memorandum. That That's the precursor to financial markets. That's the other side. It's, it's all inclusive, but it's the, it's the side that depending on your, your generality or your speciality, you're you're on that side or you're looking at you know earnings per share you're looking at you know do we do we meet expectation so 2003 i'm looking at ipos and i'm i'm back with numbers 2003 is one of those years where my mother's commentary to me find something that you can do depending on yourself that you enjoy that you can make some money off of you know that might you know allow you to be settled financially if you enjoy it it's not work 2003 one of those years we would have to jump from 2003 uh, pretty much all the way up to, I would say, uh, 2015, 2015, 2016, on or around there. And oh, by the way, she said it to me a few times in between there, because in between those years, um, Two consulting 
attempts, um, a gym attempt, uh, business about like I, I've 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 tried to stay in the same area where my my reading has taken me. Um, a lot of what my understanding is about a lot of business dealings, relationships, properties property appraisal like all of all of those things um i'm not gonna say they come easy but that that's pretty much where i've 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 been able to stay and develop right and incidentally (laughs) all of those things have a lot in common with the potential to be an individual in a position to financially be able to execute some deals and, and be self sufficient. Not all, but there, there's some, right? So that those things have happened in between 2003, all the way up to, we'd say 2015, 2016. Okay. Um, 2016, we'll just say just for shits and giggles, 2016, is is a time where um you have affiliate marketing before it's like what it is now or what it has been or what it's become um where it's kind of like everybody is saying no i'm not interested even though you know affiliate marketing network marketing is is literally the the way that information products services are are developed cultivated sold and bought in bulk like that's the way it's done word of mouth advertisements anybody that you know if if you've watched an advertisement what is that same difference it's the same exact thing um the 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 media or the 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 media the the method and the media are just the the different outlets and tools that allow it to to be cast to multiple people rather than you know the uh the coffee shop scratching something out a bunch of circles and squares and triangles on a on a napkin okay but 2016 um introduced to i'll just say it's it's an affiliate program but it's a financial affiliate program and it seems like okay well it's plausible you know, um, it's, it's again, it's centered around businesses. All businesses need capital. Okay. Makes sense. Sounds responsible. The gentleman that I would have reached out to for assistance and help after probably two, three months was posting. And, and I want you to hear this. (laughs) I need you to hear this. Well, um, this is 2015. I'm sorry. It wasn't 16. It was 2015, 2015. He's posting on his uh, social media. You ready? I'm, I'm done. You know, I'm not doing any, uh, I can't remember what they were called, but like meetings. So we'll just say meetings, but they were called something else, but it was a, basically a, a meeting, like a recruitment meeting. So he would say, hey, you know, I'm kind of I'm done with my recruitment meetings for the week. And then he would follow that up with. I'm about to go catch these pips. Now, yours truly. Wasn't educated, so I was ignorant. I didn't understand what the hell he was talking about. And it, it, it took maybe. I don't know. Um. I didn't I didn't stick with it that long, but I'm I'm just going to say maybe it took like another three or four months because it became like every day. He would just, you know, chime in or he, you know, comment on social media and say something like, hey, you know, such and such and such and such going to catch these pips. Pips is crazy. I'm going to catch some more. Caught 25 this morning. I'm going to go back. I'm going to catch see if I can catch 25 tonight. Like it, it became redundant. But. I'm I'm one of those people where 
I don't care that I see you doing something. I don't care how many times you talk about something like I don't. Again, I'm wired a little differently. And, and this is one of the times where my my irregular wiring <laughs> maybe work to my deficit because, hell, I'm, I'm about, you know, five years into something now, whereas looking back, I potentially could have been 19, you know, not not five, but maybe 19 years in. Right. Whatever. <laughs> but. My my point to you is uh, not 19, but uh, eight, nine, nine years in, nine years in, not 19. I'm sorry. Uh, the point is, I never stopped to say, the hell is this pip? What, what, are you, what are you talking about? Pips? What is that? I never went there. No different than if somebody's like, man, I just got these brand new Air Jordans. I don't care. Why? I, I don't even look at it. It doesn't matter. They're new to you. Great. You like them. Great. Okay. That's it. Like, it means nothing to me. So, went from that, went back to a regular job, you know, still looking on the side, looking on the side, looking on the side. Um, We, we go through a couple of things in the world and uh on the cusp of that that last big thing not mentioned here we all know what that was we we'll just call it the illness prior to the illness 2019 and and at this point i can't honestly tell you how um I think the only thing that I can look back and say that actually got me into trading was I was still, like I told you, an entrepreneur at heart. So I was looking at, hey, what what are some other ways that you can generate an income as an individual? And, you know, the typical things came up there. Ride, ride share wasn't as big as it is now. So, you know, Lyft was was uh, big at that. Well, they weren't big. Uber was actually bigger and Lyft was kind of like the new the newer player. And then something came across and said, well, you could trade Forex. The hell is Forex? And then that that's when, like, you know, most people are like, and then it was an epiphany and it hit me. That is when, so we're talking a whole fucking four years after the first time I heard going to catch these pips, it clicked. And I went, son of a bitch, you mean to tell me this motherfucker was doing this shit four years ago? Four years ago? Because I did, you know, did my research, did my homework, and I wasn't looking at it like, oh my God, I'm going to be driving a Lambo, I'm going to be rich in like four months. I'm rich, bitch. No, I didn't. I didn't go there. But <laughs> I looked at what the potential could be. And then that brought me right back to. My mother. And what she had been saying for a long time. Now, at this point, I didn't say anything to her. I felt like, hey, look, I got to get in here and test this out. And you're going to say, Jeremy, how the hell is this? Like you talked about support. You talked about riding in and out of a goddamn town and a village and the mirror in the mirror. I promise you it's all going to make sense. And then <laughs> it's all going to make sense in the end. And I didn't write any of this shit down. I promise. I promise. I had to vet what this was. I had to give it an opportunity to say, okay, this is a potential. There, there, you know, there's an opportunity that can be gained from this. And here, here's the, the first example of, uh, the first example. I have to go back and tell you what that individual said too. I didn't forget about that. I felt like it was important for me to kind of start to go back, to come back to that. So I got in my notebooks, made a lot of notes, 
watched some videos, did a lot of reading, and then I dabbled in in a, a, a resource that to this day I still have that account. So my very first account was an Awanda account. I'll say it again. I still have my original Awanda account from five years ago. I never blew that account. So I've I've traded unsuccessfully and successfully in an account that I've had for five years. Half of the reason why I didn't blow it is because I didn't understand uh, spreads. I didn't understand the uh, the relationship between like the Owanda units in relationship to lot size, um, the currency pairs, the base versus the quote. Uh, currency so there was a lot that you know you could say like you know something was looking out for me to keep me from you know setting that account on fire but all in all it it served its purpose you know because I'm thinking hey if I put a hundred uh a hundred units in that's gonna that's a lot and depending on the pair it really wasn't <laughs> So there are, uh, there might be screen, not on the channel, but maybe just based on, on, uh, this episode, I might post like a couple of, uh, images because I saved them. There are, they're still on my computer. I was saving all of my analysis and, you know, I was making screenshots. Like I knew exactly what the hell I was doing, but realistically what I was doing is before I realized that journaling was a thing, I was journaling. I was trying to record what my actions were and then to go back and check later and see what the hell happened. So in in the the midst of all of this, obviously, you know, luck is going to, you know, rear its head. And luck is going to appear in the form of some level of profit. Which, you know, unbeknownst to me, I'm looking at going, okay, well, I've won a couple of these these positions that you know I've I've earned a, a whopping two cents from a sixty pip move because well hell I only took a ten, <laughs> I only took a ten unit position in this and you know it ran sixty pips and uh, yeah we uh, we got two two whole pennies that we could rub together out of that well. As I, I began to, you know, increase my knowledge and awareness on, you know, what was going to be an adequate size. Um, I I was able to profit at a level where I made, I think, like 22 bucks off of a trade. Now, again being honest with you and looking back at that, I over leveraged the shit out of that position to be able to do that. Um, didn't get a margin call. Um, but I had like, I don't know, it might have been like a dollar and 15 or something in an available margin. So and I, I, and I should be clear, I put like $100 in the account. So it wasn't like I started with five dollars and I was trying to make it a thousand, which is kind of what the fuck was going on back then. But to not drag this out any longer and to tie two things together, I made about twenty seven bucks. And anybody that has an Awanda account, you also realize that, you know, technically, once you deposit in the account, like you can always, you know, settlement or not. Like if you're not in a position or hell, you can actually be in a position uh, for basically like unrealized profit and you can take a withdrawal from that account anytime you want. Um, at one point you used to be able to take like whatever it was like five. I think now the minimum might be 20, $20. I haven't taken anything out of that account in, uh, about two and a half or three years. So I'm just, I'm just growing it. I'm just trying to compound it basically. So what, whatever's in there can stay in there and I'm just trying to, you know, 
make that whatever I can make it. But in in this in these early days, you know, um, there's there's a household, there are household responsibilities, and I'll just say that this excitement, this exuberance that I felt, again, whenever something good happens, we want to share these things because we think that everybody in some aspect is like us you know you're going to share the good times you're going to you know that's that's common there's nothing there's nothing irregular or wrong about that okay nothing um in this instance i i shared with an individual hey this is what i just did sent him a you know took a picture of the computer screen sent that to him that called him I said hey did you get that picture I sent you and the response was yes and I said that's great isn't it and the response to that was yeah so can you send me gas money So, <laughs> I know you were waiting for something else, right? That that was the response. Can you send me gas money? And again, being honest, I said, yeah, I guess so. The same person and this this is me going back and and filling this in and and now i can round this out um i asked the question and i know i'm going back and forth but it, it it'll make sense because it it demonstrates again the the reasoning behind this episode in in 2015 before i you know found this affiliate program and and i i was still trying to find i was trying to find something right i was trying to find my way we'll just call it and there were a couple of conversations and one of which stands out even to this day that you know, we, we were having and it was a conversation. There was no, you know, um, no hostility or any of that. But what I had said and and it, it was again, it harkens back to my mom. It, 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 it is a part of like what our relationship was. Um, the thing that I loved the most about my mother was the fact that we could talk about anything and time stood fucking still meaning it didn't matter like the day could go we'd still be talking so um this other individual we're talking and i just simply say hey listen this thing and and it it wasn't trading by the way so I, i wasn't talking about trading um but I was I was trying to say basically, I'm gonna focus on you know this idea, right? I'm gonna focus on this, and I said very explicitly, I I'm gonna focus on this for 90 days. If I can focus on this every day, for 90 days, I should be able to determine after that time, like you know, is this really gonna be worth my time going forward? Because you know, every day, 90 days, like a lot of people say, hey, well, after 21 days, that's, you know, it's, it's, you've either created a good or a bad habit. You've developed a habit after 21 days, right? Most people would agree with that. Uh, psychology and sociologists have said, hey, look, yeah, that happens. For me, I was looking at, hey, listen, I'm, I'm trying to devote my energy, my effort, my time in, into, you know, th- this, development path 
see if I can better myself and better, you know, our situation. And I don't know why, but, you know, sometimes I'll have like a fleeting thought in, in relationship to maybe what my focus is or whatever that discipline is. And the fleeting thought that came in said, hey, ask this question. And, and this is the other part of when I say, you know, I'm not mentioning names. I'm not I'm not going through all of that. But should should this individual here, this podcast, they're going to know they're going to know who they are and. Um, this is one of the things, and it's not a grudge when I say it's, it's something that I've kept and something that I've never forgotten. It's not a grudge thing. It is, it is a, a matter of fact, and it is a very pointed thing to say, look, look at these situations and this is why it's kind of like me saying, this is why you don't look for validation. OK, so here's the fleeting question that popped up and ran across my head or ran across my mind. And I was aware of it. I knew what it was. And then I said it. I asked it like literally as soon as I was able to process, hey, this is the question. I said it. I said, listen, let me ask you a question. And this is shortly after I said, you know, I'm going to focus, you know, 90 days. I'm going to see if I can carry this out like this is not just for me. It's for everybody. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And it was quiet in that moment. Fleeting thought comes in. I mentally process. And I said, hey, let me ask you something. Just ask you a question. I said, do you do you think that I could ever make a million dollars in my lifetime? Do I have to tell you what the answer was or do you already know? You got to you got to think about the the level of discipline to ask that kind of a question. <laughs> yes, I said you have to consider the level of discipline. Anybody most people would say something like man, I sure would love to have a million dollars. I sure would like to win the lottery for a few million. I didn't say that. I said, hey, do you ever think, do you think I could ever make a million dollars? I didn't say given to me. I didn't say come into. I said, make me, me, little old me. Do you think I can make a million dollars in my lifetime? The answer was quick. It was very decisive. And it was conclusive. And the answer was no. To which I nodded in the affirmative like, okay. And it wasn't like I needed the confirmation. But at the end of the day, I don't like to... Uh, judge people without giving the benefit of saying, hey, listen, I, I come from an environment where we will conversate, we will ask questions to understand. I'm never going to assume that, you know, you take a position that that's not discussed or, you know, I don't have to have like an overall in-depth understanding as to why you do the things that you do. But I think that it's important to understand background perspective and and what positioning you take based upon what whatever the evidence or or whatever your discipline is not feelings facts what what are those right so i'm going to ask questions that for me confirmed in a time where when we talk about and now I can bring this full circle when we talk about support okay you have to kind of leave belief at the door you have to be willing to just say hey look it's going to be me and it's going to be me alone 
But whenever there's a dynamic where uh, you you have a partner in life or, you know, you have a husband or a wife and you're doing something that is very individually driven, but ultimately has a, uh, a potential of a family or a community benefit. You have to keep those types of things very guarded because in the end, especially based on the discipline of financial speculating, nobody's going to believe it until they see it. And when they see it, not everybody, I want to be crystal clear, not everybody. But a larger portion of individuals, when they see it, it's dismissive because now it is, how can I have some of that? We go right back to the mirror. But see, these individuals, when they see the mirror, they don't want to look at themselves. They don't. They're going to go past that. They're going to say, hey, listen. Um, I know you just came into something. So the guy can get like, I don't know, two, three hundred. Because I got I got some stuff coming up. Rick Ross has. Uh, lyrics in the song, I can't think of the name of the song right now. Where he's talking about Kobe Bryant. Right? He says, you know, Kobe, my boy, um, got to give up them racks. Got to get, you know, whatever. And he, he was basically talking about a time. And I'm not going to go in, into what that is. All right. So if, so if you know what I'm talking about, where there was a potential for him to have to not just settle, but ultimately, you know, based on another dynamic, like if he was going to have to pay out something. But the lyrics in the Rick Ross song go. Bitch, you wasn't in, you weren't with me. Getting them shots up in the gym. But you wasn't with me shooting in the gym. I started listening <laughs> to those types of songs to, you know, and, and I guess you could say to reinforce the fact that, hey, listen, it, it's you and you. It's you and you. That's that's all of the back story perspective. So this past week, um, it will be a week uh, tomorrow since today is Saturday. So I've I've been a uh, a certified funded top step trader. Uh, as of tomorrow, Sunday, for a week. So I've dabbled since, uh, let's say, like the end of February, March. Um, I was pretty well dedicated because I, like, I literally, again, <laughs> took that chance bet on myself uh with without really being robotic being you know mechanical looking for one thing right and I, i'm not going to take you through all of that i'll just simply say you know th this has been a, a journey that i've embraced i knew it wasn't going to be easy and the the crazy part about this is as I, I, I told you previously, currencies, 
I'm not going to say that nothing is easy. Like there's always going to be some level of work and discipline that goes into, you know, perfecting and, and refining and honing a craft. Right. But to go from currencies to go to futures and commodities, um, just the understanding and the process by which the price that you see is the price that you get versus currencies where the price that you see you know, with the addition of the spread and the commission and all of that, like that's not the price you're getting though. Those, you know, those, those differences aside, um, it took a little getting used to. So my Oanda account, you know, in good standing, no problem. Um, futures obviously took me a, a little bit and When I passed on Sunday and I posted that on a community tab, um, I waited until Monday. Obviously, I wasn't going to get any kind of communication. But here's the thing, you know. I, I felt decent about it. And, and this is why ultimately I've, I'm, you know, I know I've, I've taken like an hour and about 10, 11 minutes to get to this point. But I felt like. Like I said, there there was a certain amount of therapy <laughs> that I needed for me, um, and I needed to get some stuff off of my chest to to feel better about you know situations. Um, this is not well. I'm not going to say that this is the wrong time in a month, but I I've, I'm a firm believer that things always seem to happen, you know, at at the weirdest times of year. Okay, I'll just say it that way. But um, it was important for me to give you a little bit of backstory to bring you to this point. So past Saturday, or excuse me, past Sunday, I know I'm past. I know the combine is good. And I don't initially or immediately go right back in saying, oh, okay, well, you know, let me... Not not in the combine. Like I locked the combine out once once I realized that, you know, I, I was beyond the 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 six percent threshold and you know, like that was a wrap. I I closed it up and then I was done. The interesting thing about that, I will say, um, we'll probably well, not we. Well, yeah, we. You'll be back. Um, I'll make sure to do my weekly bias video today too for YouTube. But here's the the interesting thing about the whole passing of the combine last Sunday, the initial bullish run after the market opened last Sunday was essentially the entire move. It took me to pass that combine. Once I closed the position from where it was running bullish. Funny thing happened. The bottom fell out. And it ran short and short and short. I don't have to take you through all of that. Anybody that looked at NASDAQ and ES and, and you looked at uh, <laughs> index futures this past week, you already know what, what I'm saying. So, again, somebody, somebody would say, oh, we got lucky. No, I, I was looking at a technical aspect of, of what I was anticipating the market to do. And it did take out that that four hour low. So I was looking for a long. And I just so happened to get in, get what I needed and get out. And not say I'm going to hold this for. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to hold it for exactly what I need. Plus a little bit more just as a buffer. And then I'm done. We locked the account out. Um, I think I might have taken a couple of uh, positions in my um, my practice account, but I felt like something was missing, and I couldn't put my fingers on it. I didn't know what it was. So this is Sunday. I felt weird all the way up through basically Thursday. 
and I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. Now, I, I say through Thursday because Monday rolls around, um, had to wait till the end of the day, get my emails from uh, Michael Patak and uh, the staff there basically saying, hey, you know, congratulations, uh, log in and uh, we start the, the process for the express funded account. And again, I said, hey, you know what, I'm going to take my time. I've even mentioned this in a previous uh, video as well. I'm, I'm taking my time. I don't have to jump right back in because it took me 12 days to pass the trading combine. 12 days. Could I have done it quicker? Maybe. I don't know. But it was kind of like secondary. To be honest, it wasn't it wasn't a pro like, obviously, my focus is is and was to pass. Right. But I had other shit to go, uh, other stuff going on. I told you, I'd work in a regular nine to five. It's just not nine to five. It was, well, 11 to eight. And then it turned to a, a 215 to 1115. So the session that I was trading just fucking went up in smoke when my schedule changed. However, I was fortunate enough. And again, timing. Every fucking thing is timing. My schedule changed just this past Monday. But I passed the combine on a Sunday. So. Th those of the divinity trail will say, well, or something, but I'm, I'm not on that train. Um, like I said, I, I got the, the emails Monday and. There was a part of me that was trying to figure out, OK, what the hell's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Couldn't. It, it wasn't making sense because I felt like there should be more like, shouldn't I be? Shouldn't I feel a certain way? So a couple things that I, I was able to, to, to gather and take from it, the first of which was, well. What's what's the trading psychology mantra? Don't get too high, don't get too low, right? So part of me was saying, well, you've you've grown like I'm, you know, appreciating myself to say you you've grown as a financial speculator to where you're not leaning in to be emotionally charged by, you know, this experience. Then the other side of me said, well, shit, we're not really emotionally charged. Like, that's an accomplishment. You should be happy about that. So it's almost like it's a conversation going on within myself. You know, I'm saying, hey, you should be happy about this. And then the other side is saying, yeah, well, I, I am happy. And then it's back to the other side saying, OK, are you sure you're happy? Because you're not <laughs> you don't really act like you're happy. Because now it's now it's real. Which is why on my community tab, I posted the certificate that they sent. And, and what did I say there? I literally said. The journey begins. Now the journey begins. So it, it wasn't like a, I crossed the finish line and oh my gosh. So that wasn't it. Like I just told you, I was feeling kind of off up until Thursday. Here's why I'm off. And and now maybe you'll understand a little bit of the backstory. Again, a couple things, really about three or four, but the primary. The first of which is. The woman that had been pointing me in the direction had been pointing I'm not going to say she was pointing in this direction because she didn't know she was she was basically outlining a process to whatever avenue that I could find a plan and implement this process to work for me my mother I, I don't, you know, 
she's not physically here where I can literally go and say, Ma, thank you. That was one part of why I was off. I'm still off a little bit. <laughs> a lot of people would say, yeah, motherfucker, you're always off a little bit. That might be true. That might be true. But <laughs> it's uh, it's that select group. And like I said to you before, we could talk about anything. You know, she'd read me the fucking riot act if I was wrong about something. She she'd praise me to to you know the the heights of whatever if I did something I was successful at or I was you know I made a contribution that was significant enough. You know, there there were going to be accolades just as as much as there would be, you know, constructive criticism if. I wasn't doing something um, that was uh, valid or would have been applicable for any kind of accolade. Very fair. And, you know, while understanding like the meta the metaphysical side and understanding that, yeah, I can talk to, you know, I, I can always talk outward and, and speak to her. And that that spirit, right? It was a tangible that I was missing. But there's also the other aspect of this. My mother is the prime motivation and reasoning behind uh, why for the last five plus years and i've said this to my sister and i'll i'll say it to you guys so it's not really a surprise it shouldn't be um i have since i literally said hey listen this is something that i feel is worth worthwhile i said this back in 2019 i said i feel like this is something that's that's worth my time i also said no matter what, like I have to, I have to get this. I have to understand, like I have to make this work. Every day. And I do mean every day. For the last five years. Not one day has gone by where I haven't looked at more than one chart. I haven't marked something up. I haven't watched price action. I've not tried to understand and, and re refine and not redevelop, but go back into ensuring that what I think I understand is that's what it is. And to never rest on. I already know I can just go look and do. To understand that. I can go in and look and develop, refine and get better. Every day is an opportunity to get better. Five years. Every day. I've looked at a chart. And when I tell you that. To sit down and. Honestly, spend the day. It's a Saturday. I don't I don't really have too much of anything to do today. It'd be a leisure day. It could be a relaxing day. I may live stream today. Who knows? I don't I don't know. But a lot of times people say, well, you're you know, you're wasting your time. You spend the whole day in front of the charts. Well, I enjoy it. It's not stressful and I'm not forcing anything. Absolutely nothing am I forcing. Can I go into a paper trade account and say, hey, might want to trade some crypto? Absolutely. Based on what I'm looking at, based on, again, perfecting my craft, looking at a mechanical strategy that I use. Why, why wouldn't I just say, hey, let's let's see the conditions and everything warrant 
you know, a long or short in this environment. This looks like this would be the take profit based upon structural and price delivery. Like that, that's it's relaxing to me. Not stressful, not based on I have to make the annual salary today, so I got to get this. No, 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 no. None of that. None of that. So, a huge thank you to the woman that brought me into this world. And a reflection to the lack of faith the uh not disbelief but the unbelief if there is such a thing <laughs> of what's possible to those that would simply be looking for an opportunity because it's there it's not because you you believe in in the the methodology the time spent developing it's irrelevant you're you're looking for the end result and might i remind you of rick ross but i have to just change it up a little bit and say hey I remember you sitting down with me looking at these charts. I, I, it eludes me. I have two chairs over here and I, I'm, I don't know. Most of the time uh, I've got a sweatshirt and uh, my notebooks in one and I'm sitting in the other. Or I'm sitting in my uh, cockpit and I've got my notebooks in the... Uh, a sweatshirt and a shirt and some sweatpants in the chair. Like, it's me. It's me and me. So, for those of you that suffer from a lack of support, You're going to have to to understand that you're going to become very unpopular. And the reason that you're going to become unpopular is depending upon your situation, depending upon uh, the level of, of success that you're able to achieve, um, the financial prosperity that, that you may very well come into. You will have to arrive at a place and a destination that you yourself can stand firm and stand on your conviction to where when anyone says, hey, listen, I need, I would like to have, I want. You can very well say, yeah, I understand. And leave it at that. Just let them know you understand. That's what you want. I understand. This is what you say you need. I, I understand that you would like to have. But unfortunately, I, I'm not really in a position to help you. And do you know why you're not in a position to help them?
I'm not going to say it's simple, but it kind of is. You see, when you're, you're spending days and nights and hours huddled up in front of a, you know, a laptop screen and you got a double monitor or whatever the setup is that you have, you know, middle of the night, whatever it is, lights out, hoodie over your head. Who's with you? Who's there? Where's your support? In all of those hours and all that time. Where is it? Do you have it? Because if you do have it, then it's not a question. If, if you've had it, that's not an issue. If it's been known to you, not because you've shared it, but because your support system, your network, your partner, whatever, whatever name you want to apply to it, whomever, whatever, okay? They've been known to you. If they've been known, there's never going to be a time where you're going to have that kind of inundation of request. Because it's understood. That individual. Looking at you. That sees that mirror. Is going to understand that, hey. Hey. There's some shit I have to work on now that I'm looking at you. And you know what? Because I'm looking at you, I can appreciate the fact that you're not settling, that you're continuing to try to evolve from your present state. You're trying to get better. And why would I want to be any different? Not for you. Why would I want to be any different for me? Because I can always do better than what I'm doing. I can improve myself. You see, we, we can show each other the way. Which goes back to something I said probably well over an hour ago. Which was, we're not all equal. We're not. We might all have two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, two arms, two feet. That might be how we all start. We don't all use them the same. We damn sure don't use the thing that's between our ears and the cranium the same. We absolutely don't. So the similarity, in my opinion, <laughs> it begins and it ends with the genus. That's where it begins and it ends. Everything after that, it's up to you. And when it's up to you and you've made a decision and when you double down on your decision, everything else in terms of how you evaluate and how you see people, it, it will become clearer and clearer the deeper and the more committed to your conviction you become. It, it will truly show itself. And people will show you who they are. So that way, as I like to say, you can uh, you can handle them accordingly. And and not feel any way or the other about it. So. I think that's about it. Uh, 
hour 35 or so. Um, I appreciate you guys for listening. Um, thank you very much for your time. I will uh, try to get back to doing these somewhat regularly, like maybe once a week or every couple weeks. I'm not sure. A um, few other ideas, things that I, I'd, I'd want to talk to you guys about. I might actually have to flesh out a little bit. But I appreciate doing these. Uh, like I said, this one in particular um, kind of helped me manage some some emotion honestly um like i said i don't i don't uh don't really have the outlet that i i i once did and you know rightfully so i'm i'm pretty well guarded about some things so i appreciate you guys for listening thank you very much um i will be doing a weekly bias video today for uh this past week and then uh what we could look for next week i'm actually looking at i will tell you this quickly um i'm looking at maybe maybe uh getting back into live trading next week uh i'll go ahead and complete like my um xfa information on monday and <clears throat> if uh if i get clearance in the account set up this week maybe this week ideally it'll it would be the week after this week coming up so basically two weeks um i felt like it was important just to kind of take a break and and reset so that that's ultimately the reason why <clears throat> so um that being said again thanks everybody i appreciate you guys and uh yeah i'll, I'll talk to you again soon